everybody, and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And a little bit of a diversion again today. We're going to be looking at the Axis and Allies minis collection I have here. And I've got everything printed out as to what I have. Now these are uh, all of the ships available. I don't have all the ships, but you can see the numbers after the, uh, the name, which tells you how many I have of each. And... Uh, as it stands right now, if I've done my adding correctly, I have about 660 ships. Now, there are some I like to call my misfits. Uh, they are, you know, I got some ships here with no cards, and I got cards with no ships. So, <laughs> it's, uh, and that's what happens when you trade, right? Sometimes you trade online and you don't get what you asked for, or you get a little bit more. And uh, sometimes the seller mixes things up. So, that happens to me every now and again. Uh, and I, do my darndest to make sure I don't do it to other people. But this is how I store all of my cards. They're all stored in plastic sleeves, uh, well looked after, and uh, this is what 660 cards looks like. All done up and they're all in order. Start with Japan because I believe I have the most ships uh, in Japanese. So what does that look like uh, in actual boats? Uh, I also have some nice styrofoam islands. I got those in a purchase a little while ago when I bought somebody's. Oops, sorry for the shadow. So yeah, I've got uh, all of my boats lined up today. You can see France and uh, Australia and New Zealand. Then we got a nice mix of Holland and Poland. <laughs> uh, sometimes you just put them in little boxes and you know you put what's going to fit. So I also have all of the things that you need to play. I've got probably a hundred of these dice and then I've got all the different tokens that you need there's rearming there's the objective mines the aborted crippled one two damage there's probably three damage there too I didn't dig too deeply into the box but they're all acrylics also got the uh, smoke damage markers the burned burning wreck markers from some from Litco I get all of these by the way at historicalboardgaming.com that's where I purchased all of these extras. A little squall. Uh, so lots of fun stuff. And I got a few other things too. I didn't bring everything out today. Um, but my largest fleet and air force is the Japanese. So you can see I got lots of subs and sub chasers and destroyers and whatnot. Lots of aircraft. Which is really good because when you play the Japanese, you want to have lots of aircraft. And then back here we have the big boats, right? There's the big stuff. And we got three Yamatos and one Musashi. And uh, they're pretty they're pretty pricey to get. And uh, so I'm pretty blessed to have those. I've actually traded away a couple. So I'm down to down to three Yamato now. Here's the Italians. Lots of uh, torpedo boats out there. Some aircraft, not a ton of aircraft with uh, the Italians, but again, not known for it, right? Um, but lots of uh, cool vessels. The red stripes make them easy to pick out uh, on the game board, but we've got some of the capital ships there as well. Uh, Germany, of course, lots of subs and a number of uh, aircraft. And we got the Scharnhorst here. And of course, we've got, oh, it's upside down. Hopefully you can read that. The Bismarck, yes. So... I try to get the uh, iconic vessels of each um, each country if I can. Not as easy as it sounds though, because they do cost an awful lot. Uh, here's the USSR, very diminutive fleet and uh, fighters, and a couple of October Revolutions, I believe that's what these are. I think October. Ah, let's see here. Yeah. So, oh, is that the Obrevsky? Uh, ah, I don't speak Russian, so. Although I had to do an audition in Polish the other day. Yeah, so the October Revolution, but it's written in Russian, so that's kind of cool. And I got two of those. Those are kind of hard to find sometimes. Uh, and then here is the UK. All the UK air power. Good amount of subs. Lots of destroyers and cruisers. Lots of escort ships, definitely. You see, I still got some in bags. Lots of battleships. Lots of the big ones, and of course, even lots of carriers, which they weren't really known for, but they did have a number of them in the war. 
Uh, down here we've got my homeland, Canada, which ended up, I believe, with the fourth largest navy in a number of ships, if not tonnage, uh, because, of course, uh, the Battle of the Atlantic was a huge, huge part of the war effort for Canada, and we did what we could. I think we punched above our weight pretty well, though. We had about 11 million people, and uh, over a million of those were involved in the war directly, so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty good uh, mobilization, considering there was quite a fight after World War I uh, with the whole conscription crisis. So, and pretty much a volunteer effort from Canada. That's pretty cool. And down here we got Finland and Greece, opposite ends of Europe. But again, you put them in the boxes that they'll fit in. And then we've got the Americans. This is the second largest, uh, actually I think it's the third large, no, it's the second largest fleet in number after the Japanese, and then America and then UK. But America, I got lots and lots of aircraft, which is really handy because you love doing those big sweeping Pacific scenarios. And a uh, number of subs and the uh, patrol boats, PT 109s in there somewhere, I'm sure. And uh, cruisers, and uh, up there. And then your battleships, lots of battleships there, Missouris. And then we have lots and lots of carriers, right? Some of them are the smaller ones, like the saint Lo, Got a number of those, but we also have the big ones. So, that's my collection. It's uh, hard to catch in one frame. That's as far back as I can go with my, my camera. And uh, there you go. Now, I tried to price this out, and it's incredibly difficult, because the prices just keep changing, and typically they're going up, because this has been out of print for well, well over a decade now and they're getting harder and harder to to find and uh, so I priced but I tried to price it out a little while ago and it turned out to be about fifty two hundred dollars US for this and that's usually on the strength of the rares because they do have quite a number of rare uh, ships and planes um, the ones where you see where there's a lot of uh, doubles you know those are those are the commons typically when I've got, not doubles, I shouldn't say, I should like, like 10 of the one boat. Uh, those, are the, those are the cheaper ones. Those are the ones that you can buy for a buck fifty, two bucks, right? But then the more expensive ones are, some of them are 150 bucks just for the little piece of plastic, which I, I don't fully understand. So I don't actually buy too many anymore unless I see a, a lot going, right? So they'll sell a lot of, uh, you know, British or... Uh, you, um, U.S. or something, then I might pick it up, but they're they're pretty expensive to buy. So this being about five thousand dollars or so U.S. Uh, and that doesn't include all the acrylic markers and tokens and everything. I thought yeah, that'd be a pretty good sale. But um, I like playing this game. I really do. I mean, if somebody out there offered me five grand for this, I'd probably sell it. And then buy the, just the ships that I really, really want. And I'd probably end up with maybe 50, 60 ships and planes. And just play those. Um, so, yeah, if anybody watching wants to offer me five grand, there you go. I'll, I'll include the shipping. <laughs> uh, it comes in uh, like two or three big boxes. And, uh, of course, the binder. That would probably cost about 60 bucks to ship by itself. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm... I'm half joking, but I mean, hey, if somebody somebody out there is really looking and they want to get a good, uh, good, uh, you know, fleet, <laughs> global, global uh, Navy and Air Force uh, from all around the world, from uh, most of the different combatants, uh, you let me know and uh, <laughs> we'll get in touch. Uh, but for my part, uh, this is just something that I've collected since it came out. Uh, didn't buy enough at the beginning. I think everybody knows that, right? Whoever collects this, they're like, oh, I should have bought more. I should have bought more. And yes, you should have. And I should have. But hey, what you got is what you got. So, yeah, there you go. Someone had requested that I show this. So there it is. I'm going to try to get to a game uh, today if I can and uh, throw a video up. Of course, that'll all be in the same video. So, But hey, there's the introduction. Thanks for watching. And hopefully we can get a game of this going uh, in the not too near future. And for you, it'll be instantaneous. All right.
Well, we'll finish off with a nice look at our little Canadian fleet. Thanks for watching, folks. Enjoy the game. All right, here we are. We've got ourselves a little bit of a battle going on. We have a 204-point German fleet, including the Bismarck, of course. And the Atlantis is their supply ship. They're trying to get this boat over to the island. That's this island right here. This is their obstacle, obstacle, pardon me, objective, is to get to this island, to get the Atlantis into this bay. Okay? Now, the good news is it's not all the way across the map. The bad news is that the Atlantis only goes one space at a time which is four inches in this game. You can see that I don't play on the regular map. I'll explain that in just a moment. So we got a 204 point uh, German fleet and they're up against a 206 point British fleet, including uh, the King George V, which is not quite a match for the Bismarck, but we're hoping that our, uh, should put them right on the carriers there, that our torpedo bombers will do well. Now both of these have expert torpedoes so once per turn you can choose a friendly torpedo bomber. That torpedo bomber rolls one extra attack die when making torpedo attacks this turn. Alright so that's kind of nice. So both of these are uh, the swordfish are going to be rolling uh, four dice instead of three which is pretty cool for them. We also have five Halifax bombers. They're land based. You can see there's a little air base on there. So they're going to be here, and as you know, with uh, land-based aircraft, they can only attack once every other turn. You got to come back and rearm. So they are going to be coming after this. Now, my unwritten rule is that you cannot attack the auxiliary ship until the capital ships uh, with air power. That is, uh, you cannot attack the auxiliary ship with air power until the capital ships are destroyed. In this case. Uh, that is the Bismarck and the Scharnhorst. Okay, Graf Spee is just a cruiser, of course, heavy cruiser, but a cruiser nonetheless, so that one doesn't count. So the Bismarck and the Scharnhorst will be getting a lot of attention. Now the Germans also have a screening force of submarines, and the British do have fairly good anti-submarine uh, abilities, lots of depth charges, uh, these guys here, uh, they can drop two depth charges, and the swordfishes can, swordfishes? Swordfish, not even sure, but the swordfish can drop three, uh, so that's uh, a way to try to deal with these U-boats, uh, U510, I got three of them out here. All right, and that is what is set, so we'll see. Will the Atlantis be able to make it across the board in time and dock at the little cove? Time will tell. I'll let you know how round one goes. Of course, I say I'm going to show you how this works, and then I don't. So, now I'm going to show you how it works. So, what I do is I came up with a, a system where uh, each space is a four-inch space. So as we look on the movements, we have a speed of two, which means that the Sharn horse could go eight inches, okay? And most boats are twos except for auxiliary ships, as you can see. And then the smaller boats can tend to go faster, but it just tends to get them into trouble faster as well. All right, so that would be 12 inches that the S boat could go eight inches for these and only four inches for the Atlantis, okay? So now, as we look at the, uh, the tape measure, that is the same with range. So anything from 0 to 4 is going to be a range of 0, and then from 4 to 8 is 1, 8 to 12 is 2, 12 to 16 is 3, and then 16 to 20 is 4. And there are boats that can shoot 4, such as the Bismarck and the Scharnhorst. So they can shoot up to 20 inches away from where they are. So that gives them pretty good range, which also gives another advantage against the British surface vessels. The uh, uh, King George V also has extended range of four, 
but nothing else does. So they're going to have to try to get these vessels in as soon as they can and uh, try to get these things. So this is the, these are the choices that the British have to make. Do we go after the capital ships and then try to sink the Atlantis? Or do we go after the subs so we could protect our own ships a little bit better? Because these subs also have the wolf pack. All right. So if you control any other submarines with wolf pack, this unit rolls one extra die when making torpedo attacks. So that gives it four dice. And as you know, double hits for most of the torpedoes, which will outright sink a lot of these uh, boats. The British boats or hurt them pretty badly. All right, round one is about to begin. Germany versus the UK. Okay, the first round is done, and as you can see, no hits on anything. Yes, the Bismarck uh, defended herself quite well, and uh, all the ferry swordfish torpedo bombers were aborted, sent back, and the high level bombers all missed. So I only use three of the high-level bombers, though, because I want to be able to try to bomb each turn. Now, the great thing about the Halifax bomber is that it's only six points, right? So you can put in five for 30. But the problem is, well, the other good thing is that it does roll 10 dice, but the problem is, is that it's a high-level bomber, and it only scores hits on a six. Now, those are, you know, double hits, which is nice, but wow. And I got three against the Bismarck with the first roll. So that'd be six. Unfortunately, the Bismarck's armor is an eight. So no hits at all. And with the swordfish all gone, the Germans steam on. So everybody's just a little bit closer. Still well out of range, of course. And the submarines uh, moved up, but not their full extent. Um, don't want to get too close to those destroyers. And uh, the air power can hit them, but they're tough to hit. They're tough to hit, but we'll see. All right, round two coming up. Here we go. Will we have better luck this time? Well, the Scharnhorst had a pretty rough round. Yes, the uh, high-level Halifax bombers, one of them punched through and got two damage with uh, dropping a, the four sixes because the Scharnhorst armor is a seven. So we got four sixes, which are double hits. And uh, so that's two hits. And then a torpedo snuck through for another two. So we got four damage on the Scharnhorst. Uh, Bismarck didn't get attacked this turn. It's just uh, too tough of a target. You might be wondering about how I do anti-air. Essentially, uh, anything, any ships that are within zero range or four inches uh, get to do anti-air up to half the number of planes. So you can't just group all the planes around uh, your capital ships and then pummel them. So, because uh, in each uh, zone you can only have two surface ships, but since we don't use zones in this one, we just have uh, open seas. Uh, I say any any two ships together can do anti-air. Uh, three ships, four ships is fine, but only up to half the number of aircraft that are coming in. So. Uh, I think that captures the spirit of the, the game. But you have to be within four inches. So for the Scharnhorst, uh, unfortunately, the Bismarck is at about five inches. We had this one and this one shooting. And they were able to get rid of two of the swordfish, actually, with their anti-air shots. But that was it. So the, everything's moving up. I uh, extended the range of their uh, S-boats here. I've gone a little further. U-510s are all shooting out here a little further. And the British are hard charging right up the gut. Right up the gut. Except for these guys. They're coming out the side. See if they can't perhaps dispatch some subs. Of course, the carriers. There's no air power on the German side, so they're just going to hang back here. No sense getting blown out of the water for no apparent reason. All right, on to the next round. Will the Scharnhorst still be here? The well, Scharnhorst remains, but unfortunately the Cone took one hit. But so far the air power has not yielded any actual sinkings. So uh, when these forces hit, the Germans will definitely outpunch the British. And uh, perhaps the air power just wasn't good enough to take care of this auxiliary ship. Well, they can't go after it now. 
Gotta wait till the Sharn Horse is dead, and if they can't kill it, uh, this ship might well make it. So, the Germans, though, are going to have to slow down a little bit. They, uh, they have kind of gone out quite a ways in front of the Atlantis here, and they might have to give it air cover on the next round, because if the Sharn Horse goes, uh, now a capital ship is gone, and a lucky hit on the Bismarck, and all of a sudden it's open season on the Atlantis. So got to be careful. British have split off into two task forces here. This one is on this side of the island, of course, where the Atlantis is headed. And here we have a flanking maneuver with a small, but a eh, little bit of a punch here. This is the Belfast and a Suarez destroyer. All right, next round coming. Will anything change? Well, we had a lot of action this round, I'm here to tell you. Well, a torpedo from the, or a couple of torpedoes from the swordfish here actually came in and uh, smacked down ZG3 or ZG3, depending on your uh, pronunciation of that last letter of the alphabet. So, he's toast. Nothing was shot at the Sharn Horse this turn. But the Colm still has one on it, and the Bismarck received one. Well, how in the world did they get one onto the Bismarck? Well, from King George V, who also took one from the Bismarck, because they're extended range four. They're both at about 20 and a half inches apart from each other, and they each got uh, one shot past their armor. But the Germans had a very successful round, actually. Uh, they had killed one yet uh, in the last round, I forgot to mention, but they got another one, plus they shot down a bomber. I mean, good grief. They got every, uh, everything was hitting on the anti-air. So the British are down to four bombers and, the, uh, and one swordfish. That's all they have left now is the four bombers and one swordfish. And uh, still plenty of punch left in this German fleet. The submarines actually each got a couple of dice shots in here. I'm trying to go after the Belfast. And they uh, missed. Because they only had two at that range. But now they're kind of in range of these. They can only move one space or four inches. So they are probably in a bit of trouble. And this lone one over here might be as well. So we're going to... Uh, We'll see what we do here. They did get their extra die, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, because at that range, they only get two. But because uh, Wolfpack, they get three. But they missed on all their dice. So, All right, next round coming up. Now they can go after the Atlantis. So every, the whole German fleet's going to have to slow down a little bit. Circle the wagons to try to protect the Atlantis from getting sunk. The armor on the Atlantis is just a two, and the vital armor is an eight. And uh, with three hull points, it's not going to take a lot to sink this thing if the aircraft get lucky. Will they? Well, lots of casualties. Once you get these big guns in range, I tell you, lots of casualties. Well, unfortunately, the Scharnhorst has been destroyed. It is uh, no longer in the game, wiped out by aircraft, of all things. And down here... We have the Suarez. Suarez, if I'm saying that right. He got destroyed by the subs. And the Belfast here has now two damage and only three hull points. So probably not long for this world. So we'll put this down here. He did. And uh, no more planes got shot down this round, but uh, they did not uh, do a ton there, except with that. Uh, I think we already had one on him. I think the Colon already had one. Uh, and now we have Bismarck took one more hit but also delivered a hit on the King George V. So that's pretty cool. But also the Graf Spee, a lucky shot came in and got that from I think it was the Ajax got him. Was it the Ajax? Yeah, it was the Ajax. So uh, and we had one shot here, depth charges going after the sub, and only got, uh, one hit on them, so a double hit with a six, so he's still alive, but he does have two damage, I forgot to put two damage on him, so there we go.
do damage on the sub. All right. Oh, uh, well, we're getting closer. Uh, we did have bombers go after this, or uh, yeah, come after this as well, and totally missed. So he's alive, and uh, swordfish that was going after it was aborted as well. So we're down to one swordfish though. So this is probably going to be its target moving forward. Ah, well, it's uh, looking pretty bad here. Belfast will probably get sunk this turn. I suspect the big ships are going to trade shots again, which leaves the Germans with a slight advantage. They still got these, although these don't really punch very hard. Um, they might be able to go and do something about the smaller boats over there. And uh, But if these subs remain, they could get some lucky shots in. So right now, advantage Germans, even though they've lost one of their battleships, I think the Germans are looking looking okay. We'll see what the dice say. On the next round. Okay, well that was one of the most destructive rounds uh, we've had as far as uh, hits goes. Uh, so we have now have four hits on the King George. And I took a hit here on the uh, Javelin. This U-boat was destroyed. Uh, everything else in here kind of missed. And the subs did get a hit on here, but so did the Bismarck. Unfortunately, the Bismarck has been destroyed. Yes, uh, took a torpedo hit here. Uh, this is from the Belfast. Took a torpedo hit, but then it took 15 hits. 15 from the King George. Uh, got uh, five sixes, and then a mixture four, or maybe it was four sixes, and then uh, seven other hits on its dice. Only has 13 dice, got 11 hit. Uh, 11 of them came up as hits and uh, sixes are double. So that's it for the Bismarck and we also got one more hit here on the Graf Spee. So this is what it's going to look like at the end of this round. It was looking good for the Germans. I gotta learn to stop saying things like that. So there goes the Bismarck. This is all gone. So now we have these three German boats, one of whom has to get here safely. And we've got this one German destroyer. We've got two uh, S boats and two subs. Now, if the subs get lucky and can dispatch the King George, that might do it. That might help them out quite a bit. But we only need one more hit here on the Belfast because uh, it's only got uh, three hull points to it. And the King George has five hull points, so one more hit, and that's going to get sunk. Uh, one more hit on the Javelin, we'll sink that. And these other ones here have three, the Ajax and the uh, Uralis. Uh, Eucalyptus? Uh, yeah. So it's uh, Uralis, yeah. So... Yeah, that will be uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, now these S boats, as fun as they are, they only roll three dice, so they're likely not going to have an awful lot of success. Um, they do have torpedoes, so we're probably going to fire torpedoes, and they actually only roll two dice. Uh, but the torpedo, their torpedoes all missed. They they fired a whole salvo at them, so nothing. You got to get sixes though with torpedoes to get hits. So, all right. <laughs> We're down to it here. The aircraft have not played a large role at all. They just keep getting either aborted or shot down. So, But this round we'll have three bombers coming back. They're all rearmed. So now we have one rearming. And uh, the one last swordfish is there. So, Alright. Well, we'll see if the Atlantis can get there. No more Bismarck to protect you. Okay, quick note, I put the Graf Spee back on. <laughs> you probably saw me uh, take it off the map and it's like, nope, it's still supposed to be there. I grabbed it by accident. So the Graf Spee is still there, uh, which does add quite a bit of uh, clout. Uh, it's going to be probably 12 dice blasting at some of these uh, cruisers or possibly destroyer. But we'll see. Still lots of stuff for the Germans here, though. Uh, I think the subs are probably what are going to be telling, but... Time will tell. Here we go. Ooh, destruction. Lots and lots of widespread destruction. And although I probably could have ended this game, I thought it'd be more fun to carry on a little bit. So 
no surprises. Uh, we lost a few boats this round. The Belfast is gone. And the King George V died from a torpedo strike. And the Graf Spee, in fact, is being removed. It was also killed. And then a few more hits were plunked around. And we actually got two hits on the Atlantis. So it is only uh, one hit away from being sunk. So likely, uh, likely in trouble here. But the British ships that remain... We have the um, Euralis, we have the Ajax, which uh, avoided everything this turn, so it's perfectly healthy. And the Ajax punches pretty hard. It's going to be rolling seven dice. And uh, the, only, it, the Atlantis, the armor is only two, so I think this is going to be a fail. Um, but you never know. That's why we roll the dice. And I've had some, I've had some pretty horrific dice, too. So if, if, if the Atlantis can survive this round... Maybe all this stuff can sink the rest of the British boats. But the, uh, the hit that came here was actually from the high-level bomber. Snuck a six through. So uh, that'll be... Uh, we only have one bomber coming back this time. Everything else always gets the swordfish and everything always gets aboard. The swordfish haven't... I think swordfish had one shot in like the second round. That's about it. So... Uh, Likely the last round, I think. Either all the British British ships will be sunk or the Atlantis will be sunk. Uh, this is where we're at, though. We're getting down to it. Will we have success? Will the Germans be able to make it to the island? Well, that is it, folks. The uh, Atlantis has been sunk uh, by the Ajax, which has also been sunk. And the uh, Euralis has been sunk. And the javelin has been sunk. <laughs> it's quite the round. I was actually thinking of going after some of the German ships, uh, but then all the British boats got sunk. They are they are gone. Nothing left. And so, with that being said, and all of these boats gone, the Germans would. Just head on to victory, and knowing how badly the planes have done this last uh, or the, during this game, I decided not to take a chance, and I just poured it on. Uh, the first few shots actually missed, and finally the Ajax was able to take it out. So it dies. So the British actually win, although their entire surface fleet is lost, and the Germans have this much left. Now, if we look at the points, if you strictly look at it from a points perspective. Uh, the Germans have lost 11, 18, uh, 56, that's 109, and that's 130. So they've lost 130 of their 204. The British have lost everything but their carriers and some of their planes. So we're just going to add this up. So it's 130. So we got 18, that's 31. So that's 82, 96, plus one bomber is 102, plus the Suamarez, it's 110, and two swordfish, that's another 20 points. That's 130. Wow, look at that, 130, 130. <laughs> Well, I guess that's a fairly evenly matched scenario then. Uh, just couldn't get the Atlantis there. Couldn't get it there. And considering how anemic the British air power was this game, um, I guess I'm, I'm pretty happy that they were able to stop the, uh, stop the Atlantis from making it. So the Atlantis got... Well, if it died right about here, if we look at the... fact that it can move four inches per turn, it's still four turns away. So if the air power didn't get shot down, they'd have they'd have four rounds to try to get to uh, the Atlantis and only get one more damage. And of course, the armor is only a two. So, you know, a six, a, a single six is a uh, double hit. So, well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. And playing solo, playing this game solo is is fun, but it's also a bit difficult because there's so much interplay uh, 
between many of the ships. I may have actually forgotten a few little things here and there. If you notice something, if you know the game really well, uh, let me know. Uh, but I think I got pretty much uh, everything done uh, properly. I rolled some bonus dice for some of the aircraft and some evasion dice for the S-boats. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. All right, well, the Germans lose, the British win. Uh, so a little historically accurate there. Thanks so much for watching, folks. And I uh, hope you're having yourselves a great day and a great summer as we're just beginning. And as a teacher, I'm very happy with that. I'm here to tell you. It was a long, long year. And hoping that next year is <laughs> normal. But hey, thank you, friends, for playing. Hug your loved ones. And hopefully, like the British, may the dice be with you.